It's not the end of the world, but it's pretty close. Bloody pandemic. Unprecedented times. <laughs> it's going to be here for a long time. And there's the wind shaking the trees. If only I was allowed to take my washing out. What a treat that would be. No. I'm in wrinkly prison, all dressed up and nowhere to go. If you don't get dressed, the staff are phoning the undertakers. It's a sign. I no belong till she's dead. <laughs> We've got a lot of new residents. Transfers for the hospital. Poor old souls. They don't know what's happening to them. Ina's got it, apparently. She's got dementia. She'll not know anything. I think it gets you really quickly. Like mustard gas. Like in the war. It's so contagious. Salim died of it last week. I wasn't wanting to tell my wains on the phone. Well, they'd only worry. So, I'm barricading myself in. Nobody's touching me, except for wee holy Agnieszka, my carer. It's like a discreet cross. <laughs> I gave her money to buy cleaning products to keep me safe. She's brought me hand sanitizer, wet wipes, antiseptic wipes, they're great. 87 pence a pack. They've got a lovely apple fresh smell. Didn't have the manure day. Oh, and bleach. Home bargains, third dial, 39 pence. I'm protecting myself. I don't believe. I wish I did. I could pray. It would pass the time. <laughs> so, I knit. For premature babies in the hospital. <laughs> if I can get to two o'clock, the telly can save me. A place in the sun, tenable, countdown, lingo, tipping point. Oh, oh and of course, my crosswords. They keep my mind working. <laughs> I will survive. I will. <laughs> Days without timetables, days without meeting people. Time for my magpie sensibility. Flitting about, looking at sleeve notes and LPs. Linear notes of original Broadway cast recordings. Finding out who I'm listening to. Carl singing, I remember. He sang with his whole body, even though his body was falling apart. It's what he loved. It's what saved him as a child, he said. Stopped him from completely hating himself as an eight-year-old. It gave him a chance to show off, to exhale, to get lost in something beautiful. I don't feel sorry for him. He did as much as his body would allow, and more. He pushed himself to such a degree that his heart burst, exploded with it all. Oh, 
back. This is so painful. I've always been able to do it. It took training. Effort. For it to look effortless. This really hurts. I need to be able to do it. It's in my body. This song. I've sung it so many times. All through rehearsals, previews, opening. Relax. Be calm. Let it out. Let it out. Now, my time has come. My time is up. My time is over. This is what I've been building to. A West End success. A UK premiere. I'm in a smash. It's up, it's running. Audiences love it. You can't get tickets for money nor love, but this is agony. I can't enjoy it. How the hell can I manage? Eight shows a week is already hard, but this is the hardest ever. Now, my time has come. My time is up. My time is over here. Now, nowhere to run. I cannot hide, it can't be undone. I sweat more. I can't push as much as I usually do. It's just nerves, I'm sure. I have a lot. Obsessive, my mother would say. Over 1,500 LPs, many Broadway musicals, many obscure. I'm not teaching. I'm listening and reading and Googling. I first met Cal at the Portobello Players. We were teenagers. I was helping with scenery. Cal was the golden boy. You could just tell from the first read-through that he was better than all the others. It's not something that's learned. It just is. All the rest were amateurs. Elspeth, from the dentists, with her excruciating Bronx accent. And Billy the bank teller, acting up a melodramatic storm. Cal just played it direct, truthfully. Oh, and then when he opened his mouth to sing, we all stopped to listen. We were taken back to somewhere in our own existence where we felt connected. He brought us together. I wonder if that's when I first fell in love with him. Told you wrong. Queer. Puffy. Criminal. Funny. From the age of four. Knowing that I'm different. Wrong. Yeah. Needing to lie to survive. Finding a place to feel safe. Yeah. Singing. Amdram. Thank God for the Portobello players. Temporarily safe. But realising I would always be on my own. Yeah. Learning self-reliance. More lying. Deception. Well behaved. I don't stand out unless you're excelling at something. Drama school. No. It takes energy. It takes commitment. It takes dedication. It takes hours and hours and sweat and sweat of practice. It does. I 
I thought I'd found a safe place in music. I hadn't. I thought I could make it my own. I couldn't. It was all too brief. I'm only 25. Look what Agni is appeared with. Paper, paints, crayons. They were on sale in home bargains. She thinks it would be a good activity for me. It would keep my mind and my dexterity active. My mind and my dexterity were fine when I could smoke 20 fags a day. But you're not allowed that in here. Draw something on a big bit of paper, she says. Draw it. Your work, your house, your family. She's got answers for everything, that Agnieszka. I don't know when they grew to hate us, but they do. Oh, it starts off as mock concern. And what age are you? You're remarkable for your age. And then you hear them whispering, can she manage? She's getting slower. She's getting forgetful. Aye, how about we reduce her to one bedroom in a poorly run nursing home smelling of overcooked veg and pea? We'll charge a thousand smackers a week. One overworked nurse to 22 patients, two skivvy carers. Sorry, Agnieszka. They never stop to think that maybe she's had a rich, full life and could pass on some knowledge. No, no, no. Let's infantilise her. Let's baby her. That'll really slow her down, make her forget more. They must really hate us, the old ones. The bloody government certainly does. The government hates us. We are a drain on government spending. We are outcasts. outcasts. The overlooked. Without a voice. Society would be better without us. Kill us off. Just kill us off. We don't contribute. The, the cost, cost of, of our, our medication, medication is, is too, too high. high. This disease only affects certain sectors of society who are unnecessary. So don't tend to us. Don't offer us comfort. Make us feel all alone. Then stick us all together. And watch the virus spread. Miserable. To do that to us. The world told us we were ugly. Made us adept at self-loathing. Then it came. The virus. Attacking the dregs. Druggies and homos, making us ugly, confirming how we felt inside. AIDS is the embodiment of our self-loathing. Skeletal, Kaposi sarcoma. You see gay men all around the city like that. Dying of rare bird flu, brain cancer, pneumonia, lymphoma. Not attractive. Instantly you see the disease on them. No hiding. It's shocking. I never knew. They all had it. They were all so young. If I'd known, I would have been kinder. But Carl didn't want to tell me. He didn't want anyone to know. 
I could have helped. Maybe. Could I have helped myself? It was a different world. It was his. But the LPs keep them alive and keep me company. There comes a time when you know, I knew, in my own home, I wasn't coping. The waste thing felt e bloody enormous. It came from emphysema, lack of oxygen in my lungs, an age and being on my own for so long. I would think about doing the washing and the very thought of it exhausted me completely. I was just sitting. Feeling useless. I knew. It's the only time Russ said no to me. No, ma'am, you are not going into a nursing home. <laughs> I was. It's called autumn days. Mere like winter and beyond days. But it was right for me. It gives me company. Substandard food, but I get things done for me. I'm no lazy. All my life I was determined no to be lazy. No to be a mother with our five wains and a midden. Call it working class pride if you like. Immaculate was how clean my house was. <laughs> you can move in with me, Mam Russ said, and ruin your chances of ever having a boyfriend. You don't want an old mother-in-law around. So, I was getting on okay in autumn days. No Covid's happened. No visiting. Russ is distraught. He's allowed to look at me through the window, but I can't see him. I'm needing a new prescription for my glasses. Bloody Boris. You know when Boris was pretending that everything was all right last month and we weren't in lockdown, did they provide masks for the staff? Did the heck us like? We Agnieszka bought a mask for herself and oh, the management came screaming in. What do you think you're doing, Agnieszka? You can't wear a mask in the home. You'll stand out. You'll frighten the residents. I'm protecting the residents, Agnieszka said. The Care Commission agreed with her, and two weeks later they were on masks. But the masks came far too late. Do you know, the government are transferring old people from the hospital to autumn days without testing them? I mean, a lot of the residents in here are really frail. Covid is out to get us. Autumn days will be mortuary days, mark my words. The doctor was young, younger than me. A bit embarrassed. Don't be, I said. Tell me. You're positive. So? I hate how I conform, but I do. I'm most safe. But I can't tell the theatre. I would never get insurance. I need to tell Russ, my on, off. On, off, love. Portobello versus Woodgreen. I can't put him under threat. It's over, I'll tell him, before he travels down to see me in my show. But he's not looking forward to it anyway. 
I'll never have sex again. But he wouldn't be able to cope anyway. It's over. I'm going to look after myself. I'm young. I'll fight it. Enterprising. It'll just take practice to survive. Cal didn't want to tell me the rascal. I was in the process of moving to the big smoke. I'd found a teaching job in Peckham. No. Don't. I don't love you, Russ, he said over the phone. Well, it came as a bit of a shock. I imagined he'd found someone else. Someone more interesting than me. Someone more theatrical. You belong in Portobello. You're Scottish. You have an enormous family and you have a mother that rules you like any mother should. My mother never wants to see me again. I'll never return to Scotland. Let's call it off. There was a finality in his voice. Mind you, Carl always knew what he wanted to do in life. He knew if he was to be a success, he would have to move to London, and that's exactly what he did. He gave me crabs once, the one and only. I remember waking up in his cramped London flat, scratching down there. Ugh. He didn't blink an eye. Stop being so melodramatic. You must be used to lies with all your school children. It was at that point that I realised there was an awful lot of Carl's life that I knew nothing about. I wish we'd talked more. I have to draw something on a big bit of paper. It'll stay blank. Express yourself, Agnieszka says. A howl? All oh, my wrinkles? I'll start with a hoose. <laughs> He broke up with me, but I had a train ticket to London. I'd surprise him. I'd go and see his show, see what all the fuss was about. Glamorous. Red velvet, gold, an overture. That was just a foyer. It was then I noticed a wee card in a silver frame. And it said, at this afternoon's performance, the part of Bill will be played by but that was Carl's part. Why was someone else playing it? There must have been something important for Carl to give up the job he'd worked so hard for. I went to his digs he shared in Wood Green. A theatrical landlady I never liked. She was jealous. She wanted to keep all the young gays to herself. She let me in immediately. She was demented. Just like her cats. He's up in his room, she said. But he can't stay here. It's not safe for me. You'll have to get him out. I can't sleep. My dreams are heavy. Feverish. The horrors of the day come into my head magnified. I'm nervous. Naturally, because I've got a six-month contract and I've never needed an understudy. I'm infected. And Russ is gone. No more visiting. Bringing black pudding. 
square sausage and tatty scones. Declarations of love. Reminders of a home I never wanted to return to. A moment, a second, and your life changes. It's changed. Like, are you okay? No. What are you going to do? Nothing. Let it happen. You can't. What about your family? They've already visited. Really? My alternative family. From the show. Even the closeted leading man. Flowers. The latest musical CDs from America. Silly campy cards. I've survived as long as I can. You have. What about your landlady? She's such a drama queen and she's not even dying. Are you scared? Sad. I wish I had longer. So do I. Mum, are you scared of dying? No. I'm 86. You're born. You live. You die. It's natural. I'm lucky to have lived this long. Some folk are no so lucky. You'll live long, Russ. But always so sensible. It doesn't mean I hurt less. I apologize. I couldn't do this alone without you. You are so kind. This will be our wee secret. How long are you here for? Oh, as long as you need me. I have an open return to school holidays. It won't be long. You're so matter of fact. I'm so matter. I put them up. My paintings, my five, matchstick men and women in a block of flats. No food in the fridge some Thursdays till next day's pay, but my wains never knew about my financial struggles. I'm five wains. Russ, standing apart from all the rest. The most well-dressed. A warrior. So he phones me twice a day. I don't ask him to. He's devoted. Always brings me a bunch of flowers. Mind you, he keeps himself to himself. Hi, Mum. Hang on, Russ. Hey, how are you? What's going on? I'm finding lockdown hard. Are you missing your teaching? No, it's not that. I keep thinking about my past. <laughs> You've always been a drinker, son. My mistakes, my regrets. Well, that's only natural, but don't you wallow in it. I keep thinking about Carl and how he died and 
how I feel them. Never intentionally. You wouldn't, Ras, I know you. Making mistakes is simply part of loving. You need to remember the good bits and go on with living now. Are you getting out for your daily walk? No. Well, you should. How often are you listening to those old-fashioned records of yours? My bet. I <laughs> compulsively, if I know you. God, I mind when you were a ween. You had Sidney Devine singing Married by the Bible, Divorced by the Law, on repeat. It did my heed in. And your brothers and sisters. We all thought you were going to wear out the stylus. Russ. Russ, come on now. You need to come out of your dwarm. Try listening to some Polish techno. Mum, how do you know about Polish techno? I have my sources. The sadness will pass, son. It I does. You can't let your past define your future. Live now. Now, my time has come, my time is up, my time is over here. Now, nowhere to run, I cannot hide, it can't be undone. Life has come and gone so fast My heart now filled with memories past I know there is a meaning for my Now as I look back As I retrace As I recall it all now somewhere to be I will not hide my fate it calls to me life has come and gone so fast my heart now filled with memories past I know there is a meaning for my I know there is a meaning for my life A woman like that deserves to die with her children by her side. She wasn't brought into this world to die alone, murdered by an unfit, uncaring, corrupt government. We weren't allowed into the care home in the last few days. All we could do was look at her through the window, dying on a bed. They put us on speakerphone in the hope that she would hear us. All we could hear was a rasping breath. I couldn't bear it. In gown and mask and gloves, I broke it into autumn days, yes, I'm that butch. But it was too late. She'd gone already. A crucial part of the dying process denied. How do you move on? <laughs> it's 
sadness passes, I believe. I can't wallow. She wouldn't have liked it. Neither would Carl. Living's a privilege on days like this. Even though it's days without them.